When you're just getting started with coin magic, one of the questions you'll probably ask yourself is, well, which coins should I use? There's generally two camps of thought on this. Uh, one side says you should use normal coins, like the coins we use in our regular circulation. And then there's another camp that says, no, you should use big coins that are more visual. It'll look more magical. And there are good arguments to be made on either side. So let's dive in. Greetings and thanks for stopping by. If you haven't been watching, be sure to check out my latest three videos uh, for some tutorials, some advice and tips on the French drop and the retention of Vision Vanish. Um, today I wanted to talk about coins. Now, when you start becoming semi-proficient at the basic slights, it's a good idea to start experimenting with all different sizes of coins as you go along. But one of the main questions you should be asking yourself is, who am I as a magician? And who is my audience? You might just be a hobbyist who has a deep interest in coin magic and becoming better. Or you might be a, a paid performer who makes a living uh, doing gigs. The good news is it doesn't really matter what size coin or type of coin you use. What matters more is the setting and the circumstances in your performance. If you're just a hobbyist who loves magic, no one's really gonna care if you pull out old silver dollars to do a trick, especially if you can hand these out to the audience for them to look at. And the coins themselves are interesting objects. Now, if you're a paid performer, using big coins might actually suit you better. Now, whether you're table hopping or in a parlor type of performance, uh, it might actually be silly to perform with pocket change. But let's examine the context a little bit deeper. A lot of routines require that you borrow coins from the audience. In that case, it's absolutely appropriate that you'd be using pocket change. And in a lot of cases, that magic can be much more powerful than a fancy three fly with your big shiny coins, because this is now a personal item from the audience. Now, I mentioned circumstances and setting. If you're performing with pocket change, you can go anywhere, anytime, and be able to perform powerful magic. You could be at a dinner or at a party and be able to borrow these items to go into an effect. The major downside is visibility. Only one to three people will be able to see and enjoy what you're doing if you're only using quarters. On the other hand, you have dollars and half dollars, much more visual. So a lot more people will be able to see what's going on and enjoy the magic. And generally speaking, things are more impressive with larger objects. The one major downside is if you are at a party or dinner and pull out a coin purse and then proceed to go into an elaborate coins or cross with your silver dollars from the 1890s, it might seem a little inappropriate. But again, if you can hand these out to the spectator and show them the, the coins themselves, they just have intrinsic value and, and interest. And then if you proceed to do smooth sleight of hand with them, you'll win over the audience easily. An approach I use and I recommend to everyone is carry a couple inexpensive gaffs with you for quarters, like a turtle or a cigarette through coin gimmick or coin and bottle gimmick. These are all really affordable and take up no pocket space at all. You could even make a bent quarter for free. And if you're going out to dinner or at a party, you're prepared to do some of the most powerful coin magic there is. All you have to do is borrow someone's coin, do a switch, or add the gimmick to the other coins, and you're ready to go. I can't really think of anything more powerful than taking someone's personal property, a, a coin they've given you, and shove a pen through it, or shove it into a bottle, or have it bend in their own hand. This is some of the best magic there is. Another one is Garrett Thomas's imagination coins. Also, the best part of this, it's the perfect lead-in to do more coin magic. So say you've done something with 
their own money, most likely you're going to get the reaction of, whoa, do it again, or show, show them, or can you do something else? This is a great way to then, if you have them with you, take out your silver dollars or your half dollars. All you have to say is, that was pretty interesting, right? Let me show you something really special. Then proceed to take these out. And again, if you can, let them hold these coins, examine them. Don't say, examine these, just say, take a look at these coins. Pretty special, right? They're from 1901. And all you've said is, let me show you something special. You didn't say, let me show you this trick. So they don't know that you're about to go into anything. The coins themselves are special. They're a hundred years old. They're made of silver. They're interesting objects by themselves. So then it's a perfect time to up the stakes from the trick with their money, going into more advanced manipulations with the larger coins. Also, it's a good chance for more people to see. Hopefully you've gotten a big reaction out of bending their coin or putting it in a bottle. And it's likely that you're gonna get attention from the few other people around. So now you have these big coins out. You say, let me show you something special. You can take a step back now and do something more elaborate. At this point, it's, it's not so inappropriate to use these big coins as opposed to if you just pulled them out and started doing magic with them. You started doing magic with their own money. So now you know, all the heat is off of you and more interest is on you. Now that we're talking about dollar coins and half dollar coins, let's talk about silver and why you should be using silver as opposed to clad. Silver is just better in all ways. Uh, the coins themselves are more beautifully designed. They look better, they sound better, and they just have a, a luster that never goes away, as opposed to nickel-clad coins that are just really kind of dull. There's also the fact that most people under the age of probably 35 have never even seen a, a Kennedy half dollar or Eisenhower dollar. So as long as you're using the big coins, why not use the most beautiful big coins there are. So while we're on the subject of silver, uh, let's talk about which silver coins you should use. Now this is a purely subjective answer. Uh, I like to use Morgan dollars and Barber half dollars from around 1900. And that's just because I liked that time period in America. There's a lot going on, a lot of innovation and invention. We had, we were now a industrialized nation and mass production was happening ford motor company created the model t so automobiles were were coming out into commonplace uh, the wright brothers made their first flight so now aviation was just taking off and uh, theodore roosevelt was president which is one of the most interesting presidencies the the panama canal was dug out and it was the time of t nelson downs one of the most influential coin men of all time. But really, all these coins are beautiful. The Walking Liberty, the Peace Dollar. I really don't like the Franklin Half Dollar, but uh, it's all subjective. Whichever coin you choose, and again, I, I just prefer silver, as long as you're using a larger coin. So now let's talk about coin sizes. Should you be using dollar coins or half dollar coins? Now, I think this is also a pretty subjective question. Personally, I use both. I carry both on me every day. There's just some routines that look better with the largest coin possible, while other routines you could use either coin. You'll see in my videos I only use dollar coins for the most part, just because they look better on video. There's something that happens when we take a three-dimensional reality and flatten it down to two-dimensional rectangles. Something's lost in the depth there, where coins look even smaller than they are, and people look fatter than they are. But uh, for the most part, I, I think I prefer half dollars for most everything. 
I think it's just a, a more versatile sized coin. And it's far more forgiving for things like Tenkai Pinch or deep back clip stuff. You, you're less likely to flash this coin with most any palm. And so I, I have the confidence of knowing if I'm using half dollars, it's nearly impossible for me to flash no matter how close I am to the spectator. So it has the advantage of being small, but yet still visible to five people or more. If I back up or if I come close, I know I'm not gonna flash this coin because the size of my hand. Now, I'm of average size, and of average height and weight, and my hands are average size. So I may be unique in that I can go either way with the silver dollar or the half dollar. I have met people that their hands are just small and using silver dollars is maybe multiple silver dollars is just not feasible for them. Maybe they can do a one coin routine with one silver dollar, but that's about it. In that case, you should choose half dollars. And I've also met guys that are just huge with big beefy hands and a half dollar looks like a dime in their hands. In that case, I would only use silver dollars. But if someone insists that you only be using silver dollars in your coin, I would, I would tell them to get over themselves because I feel like it's mainly an ego thing. Oh, my coins are bigger than yours. I can, I can palm this many dollar coins. And no one cares how many coins you can palm if your hand looks like you've been in an accident or something. So experiment with both sizes, get caught and then learn, get better, and then you'll settle in to your preferred size. But never give up on the next size up. If you can, if you can do half dollars, always be working with dollars. Here's another tip I recommend to everyone. When I'm at home, I practice with silver eagles. Now these are just a little larger than a dollar coin and a little bit thicker maybe. And it just stretches my ability when I'm trying to practice with these larger coins. It's kind of like a, a baseball player warming up with a weighted bat. You know, before they step up to the plate, they're taking swings with the weighted bat. So once they get up to the plate with their normal bat, they're ready to smack that ball out of the park. It's the same concept here. If you stretch your abilities with this larger coin, if you step down a size, everything's gonna be so much smoother and look better and more effortless. There's also the argument of a larger coin is gonna be more impactful because vanishing a larger object seems more impossible. And that's true, but the audience is never gonna compare these two coins. You're not going to do a vanish with a half dollar and then pull out a dollar coin and do the same thing. To a normal person, a half dollar is a huge coin, especially in this day and age when people don't even really carry pocket change anymore. And like I mentioned before, it's not likely that people have even seen a half dollar in their life. I've met plenty of younger kids now that have never seen half dollars. I'm talking Kennedy dollars or Eisenhower dollar. So I think you can't debate a physical fact that, oh, this coin is bigger than this coin. So it, it is more impressive to vanish a big coin. But if the audience isn't aware of a size comparison, a half dollar is also really impressive when you vanish it, because this is a big coin to them if they've never seen a half dollar. So I hear that argument sometimes and I agree, but I also disagree because I, I can't think of any routine that I do where I'm actually using both sizes of coins. Maybe if you were to take a dollar coin and turn it into two half dollars, and not that it matters, but if T. Nelson Downs Fred Capps, Di Vernon, David Roth, Mike Gallo, Jeffrey Lotta, 
Michael Rubenstein, Kainoa Harbottle, Eric Jones, Giacomo Bertini, if they all used half dollars and if Eric Jones and, and Michael Rubenstein and David Roth and Giacomo Bertini all performed on Penn and Teller on, on national television with half dollars, then I don't mind being part of that club either. I mean, you would think if someone was performing on television on a stage, why wouldn't they be using dollar coins? Because they're more visual, right? Well, if you were on stage, they would have to be projecting you on screen anyway. So they chose to use half dollars and they're successful with half dollars. So it's just something to keep in mind. So bottom line, learn some tricks with pocket change and maybe carry a couple gimmicks. Again, there's a, a lot of gimmicks made for quarters that are really affordable and they take up no pocket space and you'd be ready to do amazing things with them. And you don't even need gimmicks. There's there's Mr. Clean Coins Across by Jay Sankey or Three Quarters Across, which is basically the same trick. You can do a trick with one quarter and a pen and do a bunch of sequences, vanishes, pen to cap. So you don't need the gimmicks, but if they're affordable and take up no space, I really recommend just carrying them. And use the biggest coin you can experiment get comfortable with both you're gonna have to get caught and then try to fix those things and you'll settle in to what you prefer but again don't give up on the bigger size uh, it's always going to help you out to stretch your ability out and again consider using the biggest coin you can handle while you practice because it'll make your other work look even better I didn't mention this before, but I think poker chips are the same size as silver eagles. Now, these are about $20 each, so that's quite an investment to make for something you're just going to practice with. And again, that's something I didn't mention is the price of silver compared to clad coins. That may be a big factor for you. You can, you can use clad coins in your work. It's, absolutely fine but I still recommend at some point trying to get silver coins make that upgrade because one, once you have three or four silver coins you'll understand why they're better so thanks for stopping by guys uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already leave a comment I'd love to get some interesting questions you know maybe ideas I can talk about in future videos and uh, I got something kind of cool planned for the end of the month. So come back and see what that's all about. Thanks again, guys.